Acts chapter 26, and I'm going to look at verse 18. If you've got your Bible, this portion of Scripture should be written in red. This is Jesus speaking unto Saul, who became Paul the Apostle. Yes, Jesus still speaks, even after his ascension, even after he was raised from the dead, even after he ascended into heaven, he still speaks. Amen. Jesus tells the apostle Paul, who was yet to be an apostle, who was yet to even be called Paul, he says that he is going to be a witness. I'm in verse 16. He's going to witness both the things which you have seen and the things in which I will appear unto you. I believe the promises of God are sure that God will appear to you. Jesus will appear to you. And he will show you who he is with both signs, wonders, and he will even show you who he is by you becoming a witness of him. Verse 17, he says, Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send you. Listen to the commissioning in which he is sent to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sin and the inheritance of among them which are sanctified by faith, that is in me. God sets us in the earth as the body of Christ to open up eyes. To open up eyes. God wants somebody to see something. You know, I've been on this for a long time and I don't plan on changing. Because God allowed me to see his mighty works. He has allowed me to see his hand. All you got to do is no simpler than this, is ask God, I want to see you work. I want to see your hand. I want to see your power. I want to see your glory. And if you ask God that with a sincere heart, he will show you his invisible hand. He will show you his invisible heart. That which you can't see with your eyes, God will begin to show you. He will begin to show you his works in the earth. God will begin to show you. Even when you're not paying attention. Even when you're, something else takes place before your eyes. God will begin to show you, son, I'm doing things that you know not of. Call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things which you know not of. Your mind can be somewhere else wandering off in the distance and God will show you I am still at work. Turn people from darkness to the light and from the power of Satan unto God. I love that part. God sets us in the earth to turn, for there to be a turn from the power of Satan unto the power of God, unto the power of God. I want to see the power of God in my life. I want to see not just in my life, but around my life, around my home, around my family, around my church, around my city. I want to see the power of God at work. God is still a miracle worker. God is still a healer. God is still a savior. He has not changed. We've been out walking. So I'm going to talk to you this morning about power walking. God's going to put some power in your walk. You may have walked before, but you're going to walk in power. God wants you to walk in power to turn people from the power of Satan to the power of God. God's going to cause a new walk to come upon this church. He's going to cause a new walk to come upon your life, a walk of power. You know, I began to call out to the Lord a couple of weeks ago, and I said, God, where is the power? We, you know, we have church everywhere. We have church on this corner and church on that corner. But where is the power of God at? Where is God's power? Where is your power, Father? I've been looking through the scriptures. I began to find. He says, the Apostle Paul tells the Corinthian church, he says, I will come unto you shortly if the Lord will. 
and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. This becomes the test. This becomes the test. We can carry on with theological jargon. We can carry on with all of our theological bits and we can have uh, homiletic preaching and hermeneutic teaching. We can have all of these things. We can have doctorates in seminary and Bible college degrees. We can have a string of, of alphabet behind our name of what we know. We can be great public speakers. We can speak with enticing words. We can speak with the wisdom of men. But Paul says, when I come, I'm going to be looking for who has the power. Who has the power of God? We can talk Christianity. We can put on the face of Christianity. But do we have the power of Christ? Where he says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but it is in power. Sometimes the most powerful thing you can do is to say nothing. I'll let that sit on the altar of your heart for just a moment. God showed me a long time ago that many times the most powerful thing I could do was say nothing. Some of you want to convert your friends, convert your co-workers, convert your family. Many times, the most powerful thing you can do is to say nothing. Let them see the power of God in your life. If you have the power of God working in your life, it's undeniable. If you don't walk like them, talk like them, I've watched God do it before. I've shared with you before. I, I've been at work and a group of men standing around. One starts telling a dirty joke. I walk off. I go sit somewhere else by myself if I have to. You know, some people could look at it and say, you know, he's stuck up. Whatever. That's not my life. I'm not going to get involved in that. Am I offended by it? No. You know, some people, they, they may get offended by people cursing or saying whatever. If, if you do enough uh, ministry in the world, you're going to hear and see everything that there is. Does that mean that I want people talking like that? No. But I know myself. And I have to let God do what he's going to do. I watched one instance where I walked off from the crowd that God turned that whole thing into a Bible study. How did that happen? I walked off, went and sat at another lunch table by myself. It wasn't long. One of the other guys got up from over there and he said, I noticed that you left when that conversation started. He said, I, you've got to be a Christian. Yep, I am. He said, well, I go to church too. We started talking. We started talking about the Word. It wasn't long. Somebody heard us talking about the Word of God, and then another one come and sat down, and another one come and sat down. And it wasn't long that at lunchtime we were having Bible study. Amen. Sometimes you just got to walk off and let God do what He wants to do. Let God draw them. Let God do what He wants to do. Sometimes we get, a, we, we get in the way and, and try to start something. You know, when God starts something, he'll complete it. He'll bring it to pass. Just through that simple walking away from darkness, that simple walking away from that, that whatever you want to call it is going on. I watch God heal people, save people, deliver people, people change churches, people got filled with the Holy Ghost just from one instance. Acts 1 and 8, what does God say? You will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. If you got the Holy Ghost, if you have the gift of tongues and you say that you have God on the inside of you and you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, then Jesus says that you have power. You have power. Power from on high. And 
Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians. Look at what Paul says. My speech and my preaching, it was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. I'm expecting God. I'm expecting God to do something powerful. How many times this morning, before we even came here, did we watch God orchestrate all of our timing? These two brothers that were here, they could testify of that this morning. It's like something would stop us, and then, boom, we go, and it's at the right time. We wind up coming across people's paths. We stop to talk about something, and boom, here comes another one. God orchestrates it. I'm watching God's power. I love watching God's power. Why? Because my faith does not stand in the wisdom of men, but rather in the power of God. I trust and believe. Oh, listen to me. The devils are screaming about this. They do not want me talking about this because they want to believe that they hold Lancaster under the power of Satan, under the power of darkness. We are going forth. As Deuteronomy chapter 11 says, I'm going to read it to you, you can go there with me. Deuteronomy chapter 11, we are going forth into this city to do what? Verse 22, God says, for if you shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you, listen, when God tells you to do something, now you might think, is he just talking about the Ten Commandments? When God tells you to do something, you just go do it. It doesn't matter how nonsense it makes. It doesn't have to make sense to you. When the Lord put on my heart, he said, you're going to go back out, but you're not going to go like you went before, and you're not going to do what you did before. You're just going to walk, and you're going to pray. My mind said, well, what, what's that going to do? I'm just being honest. Y'all might say, oh, Pastor, you're supposed to have faith. Yes, I have to have faith in whatever the Lord says, not just in his word, but what he says to me. Whatever he says, do it. He says to love the Lord your God and to do what? To walk in all of his ways. I'm going, I want to walk in his ways. I want to walk in the way of the Lord. I want to walk in the way. Did you know that Jesus, he walked everywhere he went. He could have ridden a donkey, but he pretty much walked everywhere he went. There was a reason. I ain't trying to sit here and advocate that you need to walk everywhere because some places you ain't going to be able to. You've got a car drive. But God does send us to walk in his ways and ways in which we would not do things. God says, my ways ain't your ways. Could I get in my car on Sunday morning, Sunday night, drive up and down the city streets? Yes, I could. I could pull up to people, roll down the window and say, you need me to pray for you? I could do that, but that ain't what God told me to do. God told me to put on your shoes and walk. Get out there and walk. Get outside the walls of this church. Get outside the walls of this building. Get outside the walls of religion. I want you to begin to walk. God ain't one calling us just to walk around. You know, sometimes we felt like, what are we doing? We're just walking around. God's showing his power. God is showing his power. He's bringing people out of their houses, chasing us down. I mean, think about that. You, you'll never see this stuff when you're driving through the city. You won't, it, it just won't happen that way. I ain't saying it can't, but I'm telling you, when God tells you to do something, that's the way you do it. Verse 23 of Deuteronomy 11, he says, Then will the Lord drive out. What is God going to do? When you start walking in his way, he will drive out all the nations from before you and all that shall possess, and you shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourself. Now look at verse 24. He says, Every soul, every place where upon the soles of your feet will tread shall be yours. That promise was to Israel, and that promise, I believe, is to us. When God tells you, listen, God didn't tell Israel to get in chariots and to ride horses into the land of Israel. They walked. They crossed Jordan on foot. When, the, when their foot set into the Jordan River, God caused the waters to be rolled back all the way to the city of Adam, and they crossed over on dry land once again. Everywhere that their feet went, God told them when, when you go into other cities, they walked, they look, when they went into Jericho, they marched around the city. They didn't ride a chariot around it. 
They walked it out because God wanted your foot to set on that ground. Take your foot real quick and set it on the ground. Now God says every place the sole of your foot. That don't mean you running through the place. The sole is the, this inner part of your foot. That means your foot's going to start resting in that place. There's something that starts happening in the Spirit. I'm telling you this by the Spirit. There's something that begins to happen in the Spirit when you set your, your sole of your foot down and you begin to rest it in certain places. You begin to see things that you didn't see before. You become acquainted with what you would not have normally seen. Here's what blows my mind. I've been out here in these city streets for years. The body of Christ is still debating on things. Whether we should do this, whether we should do that, whether this is right, whether this is wrong. I don't have to do no more than look at what ravages my city and know what's part of the kingdom of God. I've walked the streets for years. I've never found a Bible laying on the side of the street. But everywhere you go, you'll see beer cans. Everywhere you go, you'll see liquor bottles. We picked, up, we picked them up this morning, right? When you begin to see those things, you see the influences of darkness. I, it ain't hard for me to connect the dots. That dot connects real simple. I've never noticed the kingdom of God where in great influence, wherever there's a bar, a liquor store. I'm not trying to tell you. But we're still debating in the body of Christ whether we should do these things, drugs, prostitution, all those things. They, they, come, they come with it. I don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. But I do know this. When I walk up into those situations, those territories and those places, I'm proclaiming that those things are falling, those things are losing influence, and the kingdom of God is gaining influence. I've been set to walk this out in my city, in my streets, in my home, in my territory, and, and everywhere that God sends me to go. If God sends me into another city, I'm going to walk out whatever God tells me to walk out. I'm going to go where God tells me to go. I'm going to be sent wherever God sends me. If God sends me to Timbuktu, if God sends me to Kalamazoo, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. I wasn't trying to rhyme that. That's just the way it came out. <laughs> Romans 13 tells us this. Let us walk honestly. As in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and in envy. We need to look at what we walk in. First of all, we need to walk honestly. You got to walk honestly with yourself. You got to walk honestly with God. You got to walk in honesty and integrity. To walk honestly doesn't mean that I'm not telling. I ain't trying to deceive nobody. I ain't trying to front nobody. I ain't trying to act like I'm somebody. I ain't trying to act like anything. I don't need to become anyone other than who God has called me to be. I'm not emulating anybody but Jesus. I don't want to be like preacher so-and-so. I, I don't want that. I want to be who God gave me the grace to be. And God has given you grace to be who God made you to be. Stop worrying about what somebody else thinks about you. Stop worrying about what somebody else says about you. It don't matter. I was riding, we were riding with my, my son the other day, my oldest son, and, and we were talking. And I said, you know, it don't matter to me what anybody says about me. I know what God says about me. That's all that matters. That's all that matters is what God says about me. 
Because that's the report I believe. People are going to say all manner of things about you, good and bad. Some people got good things to say about you. Some people got bad things. Some people ain't got nothing to say, but oh well. I believe what God says about me. Listen, he says that we have to walk honestly. He tells us things not to walk in. Don't be walking in rioting and drunkenness, chambering, wantonness, strife and envy. Sometimes we need to look at what we're walking in. Because whatever you walk, if you're walking in those things, you can't walk in the power of God. Look at what he says. On further, he says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. It literally means to be clothed in Jesus. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Did I say this was going to be easy? I started out saying, where is the power? I'm telling you why the church is not walking in power. Even though God has called us to walk in power. We've got tongue-talking Christians that don't walk in power. Even though Jesus said that you would receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I'm not looking for many. I'm just looking for a few. A few people that want to walk in the power of God. Because I need some people to walk with me. I can't walk this alone. I need some people who will walk in the power of God with me. Because I believe that God will demonstrate himself in don't take but two or three two or three and God will begin to do something because he says if any two of you will agree he says what will I do if any two of you agree on earth as in touching anything what did he say it will be done either you believe God or you don't either you believe him or you don't I don't need 12,000 I don't even need 12. I just need two or three. Two or three. Two or three. Who will agree? That rhymed again. Wasn't trying to do that. <laughs> we will walk in power. Listen to me real close. Let this sink into your heart. I ain't trying to sermonize you. I'm talking to you about what I'm talking to the Lord about. What he's talking to me about, my conversation, the course of my conversation with him, I got more than I could give you today. I hope you're that full. Your cup should overflow. You should always have more than enough. If you've been spending time with Jesus, your cup will be overflowing. I got more to give than I could possibly give. I'm blessed in that way. I am blessed and highly favored of the Lord. God's speaking to me. I'm glad. I get up in the morning for God to speak to me. That's why I get up. I don't just get up and think I, I got work to do. I get up because I want to hear from God. That's my life. That's what I, what else am I going to do? What else do I need in this life? I need to hear his voice more than I need natural food. That's, that's my life. We walk, we will walk in power when we develop singleness of eye. Now God says he wants to show you some things. He wants you to see some things, but you're going to have to develop a singleness of eye. What do I mean? This becomes the singleness of my eye. That everything that I do becomes for this purpose. For God's glory. This is the end of everything in which Jesus did. Everything that Jesus did, he did for the glory of the Father. He did for the glory of God. He did not do for himself. He did it in order that God would get the glory. To me, that is the epitome of humility. Is all attention, all focus becomes about Him. Everything that I do, everything that I am, everything that I become is all because of Him. God told me a long time ago, I said, God, it seemed like you've hidden me. Why have you hidden me? He said, I have hidden you because I don't want men to find you. I want them to find me. You have, to, you have to begin to accept that and receive it. I want to be hidden. I don't want to come out from hiding. I want to stay hidden so that men don't see me. I don't plan to go to the corner and blow a trumpet. And say, here am I. I don't intend to blow a trumpet and men say, and you know, say, look at my good works. I'm not intending to do those things. 
whatever I do for the glory of God, if no man ever sees it, glory to God. Because if they are not born again, they can't see the kingdom of God anyway. They cannot see what God's doing. Singleness of eye always comes to this end. If you're going to walk in the power, y'all better hear what I'm talking about. Because the whole lot of the people that are within the church, they want, they, it, there's a whole lot of people that are in witchcraft in the church. They want the power of God on their life so that people will look at them and think that they have attained to something. That's no different than witchcraft. That's no different than Satanism. Simon the sorcerer wanted to buy the power of God. Peter told him, your money perish with you. You, you fill with the gall of bitterness. You don't even understand what you're talking about. The more you walk in the power of God, the less you will walk in who you are. You forsake yourself. My God, this is, be, this is being a disciple of Jesus. If no one, being a disciple of Jesus, I'm going to tell you the truth if nobody else will. I will tell you the truth if YouTube won't tell you the truth. I will tell you the truth. If you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to have to forsake yourself. Following Jesus is not getting up on Sunday morning and going to church. Following Jesus is an everyday thing. And it is letting God speak the truth to your heart and repenting when necessary. And it's also letting God uh, work through you to where you become none of you. Many times you start thinking, God, you're killing me. No, you are supposed to already be dead, son. I already held your funeral at your baptism. If you don't know that, when you got baptized, that was your funeral. That's why everybody clapped when you came up out of the water because you died and you put on Christ. You thought they was clapping because you got saved. No. All of heaven was clapping because you died. And now Christ can live. We're to become imitators of Christ. That's what it means to put on Christ. I was reading something by the great Charles Finney this week concerning becoming an imitator. You know, there are, there are comedians who have become great imitators of people. I mean, they study of people. There are people that, that imitate, you know, the presidents. They'll, in, they'll in, uh, be imitators of Trump or Obama or Bush. And they have watched them so much, they can mimic their face movements, the way they say something, the way they talk, right? To where if you had your eyes closed, they sound just like them. They'll move just like them. That's what this means when it means to put on Jesus, that you become an imitator of Jesus. You begin to walk like him, talk like him, Say things like he said. You become an imitator of Jesus to where when somebody hears you, they wouldn't know the difference between, was it, was that Jesus? I didn't say you was Jesus. You become an imitator of Christ. Luke 24 and 49 says this, And behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued from, with power from on high. God has always intended for you from the very beginning before you ever got born again. I want you to look at somebody beside you. Tell them amen first of all because I want you to amen it before you even say it. Amen. 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 Look at somebody else and tell them amen. Because I want you to hear this. But while you were still walking in sin, God had already decided that you were going to walk in his power. Amen. amen. You said amen afterwards. Amen. <laughs> Before and after. God intended for you to walk in his power. God intended for you to see his power. I want you to think about the places that you go. Home, school, work, job, whatever. I want you to be able to go in there this week and be able to say, God, you have intended for me. Because this is my faith. This is my faith. I believe this. I, I'm not, listen, I can get people on the phone if I need to. I've worked out of town. I've worked in Charlotte and I have watched the power of God on my job. I have watched God do things on my job. 
I can get people on the phone to testify of it. Multiple, multiple, multiple people. Because I simply walked in to work and said, God, show me. Show me. I'm looking. I'm just simply looking. He'll point out somebody to you. I literally believe that God sent me to workplaces because he sent me there for somebody. He sent me there for somebody. It's happened time and time and time again. If you just want to see God, just talk to him about it. Now, look at what he says. Watch this. This word power is dunamis. We may be familiar with it from the Greek dunamis. It means strength, power, ability. But here's all the definitions to it. Inherent power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. I have inherited the power of the Holy Ghost. All the power of the Holy Ghost and who he is as God. The, ra the razor from the, the resurrection power of Jesus in the Holy Ghost. Just by the nature, the divine nature of the Holy Spirit, just by his divine nature and his virtue, it is what is already residing in him and that power is on the inside of me. Amen. How else can someone call forth the dead to become alive again? Jesus raised the dead. When he told the apostles that he was sending them out, he told them he was sending them out in what fashion? Cleanse the leper, cast out devils, Raise the dead. Listen to the things he told them to do. Could they do that in themselves? Absolutely not. They had the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to do so. Power for performing miracles. Moral power and excellence of soul. This is one I've been talking to the Lord about this week. If I'm going to be endued with power, I want to have excellence of soul. I didn't say spirit. Soul. That's what the definition. Excellence of soul. I'm going to have an excellent soul. I want to have an excellent soul. Excellence. Excellence in my emotions. Excellence in my thoughts. That's the way I talk to God. You talk to him this way. God, I want your excellence. I want to have an excellent spirit on the inside of me. I want that, that excellent spirit to become an excellence of soul. You ever been around somebody and you thought, man, they do things with excellence. If you do things with excellence, you will excel. When I lay my hand to do something, I don't lay, you know, I tell my children, as you can ask my son, I tell him this, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. If you do this sloppy, you'll do that sloppy. I don't do anything sloppy. I'm going to do it wholeheartedly. I may not be the best, but I'm going to do it with everything that I got. Amen. I ain't got to be number one. I ain't got to get a trophy, but I'm going to do it with everything that I got. Power and influence. Listen to that. Power and influence. It also means to be able to obtain wealth and riches. I believe it's the book of Proverbs that tells us that strong men can obtain, they can retain wealth. Mm -hmm. Power and, and resources. Power consisting in armies. I believe that God has given me an army. I believe that God's given me an army. I believe you're that army. And I'm in that army. I'm part of that army. It's not my army. It's his army. I'm going to have power in an army. I'm going to be part of a powerful army for God. Lord have mercy. John 1 and, excuse me, 1 John 2 and 6 says that we are to walk even as he walked. 1 John 1 and 6 and 7 says walk in the light and you'll have fellowship with God and fellowship with one another. You ought to write every one of these scriptures down. We taught we kid Philip back here. Because when we go out walking and Philip goes with us, we just kind of walk around gingerly praying. And Philip's going. Look at him, he's power walking. One day we was making fun of him about power walking, and the Lord said, I want y'all all to walk in power. I ain't say nothing. I know he's just trying to get there quicker, but we were making fun of him. I heard the Lord say, I want all of y'all to walk in power. Don't be ashamed of that power walk, brother. You keep power walking. Amen. <laughs> Third John 4, walking in truth. Walk in truth. First Thessalonians 4 tells us how we are to walk and to please God so that we would abound 
more and more. There is a way in which we can walk and please God. We are to walk honestly, he says, with all men. We're not to be walking in dishonesty, trying to delude nobody. Walking worthy of the Lord. That scripture tells us in Colossians that we would walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. I want to walk worthy. I want to walk in Him. Colossians 4 and 5 says that we're to walk in wisdom. Ephesians 2 and verse 10 says that we are to walk in good works. We're not to walk in vanity. Ephesians 4, 17, Galatians 5 and 16 and verse 25 tells us twice in there that we are to walk in the Spirit. He says if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. You can walk in the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 tells us that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. Look at how many times that God's telling you to walk. What are you supposed to walk in? Look at this verse. I, I put some highlights in this one. 2 Corinthians. This will be my last scripture and then I'll close out for today. We've got to get ready tonight for Brother Thomas Izzard that's coming at 6 o'clock. He's going to be leading our Bible study. He's the pastor of Breath of Life Ministries and we're excited about him coming out this, this evening Amen. to speak to us. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. Look at what the Bible says. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk where? I will walk in them. When I read that this week, something hit my step. Just like that. I was sitting in my chair, but I still my walk got hit like that. <laughs> I said, my God, I'd never thought about that. When I'm out here walking, you are walking in me. Your walking ain't vain. No walking, when you go out here walking the city, he's walking in you. Something in my spirit, I don't know what it is, that just does something to my spirit on the inside of me. I can't really explain it. I can't put it in English words. I'll just say it in tongues. It just does something to me on the inside because he is walking in me. He is walking in you. That's why I even feel so much more compelled that when my foot hits something, it's, the, it's his foot on the inside of me. If you don't think that the devils know when you show up, they do. You can feel it. There are times when we walk into certain places, you can feel the demonic forces. So if you may not be, some people may not be aware of that. I'm, I am very aware of that. I'm not saying I am at all times. There are times that I'm more aware than others. But I know that it is the discerning of spirits working on the inside of me, that gift of discerning that there's something here that is not of God. Because it, it, it repels your spirit. And the Bible tells us, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. There's a spiritual war that's going out, but yet we are walking it out in the flesh. We walk in the flesh. Don't sit up and try to act like you don't. Every one of us, you in the flesh. You walk in the flesh. You are in a body of flesh. I ain't say that you're carrying out the lust and the deeds of it, but you are in this body of flesh. It is a body. You're in a soul. Those things are flesh. You have flesh. You're going to walk this out. This is the power of God is for it to be walked out in the flesh. I hope you hear what I'm telling you. When he says to walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
But that don't mean you ain't going to walk in the flesh because God's power through the Spirit is going to be walked out. What is the, in the power of the Spirit? He wants it walked out in the flesh. Lord, let that hit your soul. Let it hit you. Let it hit your flesh. That's what I start telling my flesh. You're going to walk in the power of God. I know there's a thousand scriptures you could throw up and say that oh, the flesh is contrary to the spirit and the spirit of the flesh. I believe this flesh can be brought under the obedience of the spirit. Does that, is that going to happen overnight? I didn't say it was. I didn't say it was going to happen overnight. This thing requires discipline. It requires faithfulness. It requires devotion. It requires commitment. You've got to be committed to prayer, committed to the Word of God, committed to the will of God, committed to do everything that God's called you to do. You've got to be committed to this thing. You've got to be committed to seeing your flesh in its rightful place. Does that mean it ain't going to try to act up, say things it shouldn't say, do things it shouldn't do, look at things that it shouldn't look at? It's going to try to do all kind of crazy things. But you have to continue to tell it, no, you ain't. You deny the flesh. Just when you think you got it all worked out and under control, it'll slap you in the face every once in a while. Your tongue will say something. You get all irritated. Something will try to happen. The devil will try to mess with you. Yes, indeed. Don't, don't try to act like you all that in a handbasket too. What? I ain't going to say that. Walk in, walking in your calling. Walk in newness of life. Glory to God. Walking in newness of life. Well, I'm talking to you about walking in the power of God. So, my point in that is done. But, This is something that we just have to take an honest assessment of. And I'm asking you, I'm just asking you this so that you can do yourself a checkup here. I understand my job, my role, my position in all of these things. God didn't just put you here to, to hear me talk this morning. He wants to talk to you. And I believe that not only what he's saying to me, he says to others. I believe that because I, I know it ain't for no private interpretation. How much power are you walking in? And that's something that I ask myself. You know, a lot of times at the end of things, we wind up with a lot of questions, but how much power are you walking in? It's good to know how much power you're walking in. Do you have Power over your own mind, over your own thoughts. Power over your own flesh. I think this, I'm not saying any of that to condemn anybody. My heart, I say, I want to walk in the power of God. I want to see the power of God. Not only do I want to see the power of God working out here. We can get real caught up in miracles, healings, so on and so forth. I want to see the power of God working here too. Working on my heart. Working on my mind. God, not only do I want to see you working out here, let me see you working in here. Because this is what needs to be changed. This, this is the nearest thing to me. And it needs to be changed. My heart. My heart needs to be changed. All those rough edges that are on my life, I need them shaved off. I need them sanded off. I need those things smoothed out, God. Many of you, you know your faults more than anybody else. I don't need to convince you of them. I don't need to say anything to you. I don't need to list them off. I don't need to name them. The Holy Spirit will talk to you about those things. But something in our heart does have to come into an alignment with His will. And I found one of the most powerful things that I can pray is for God, for me to say to God, let me see you do this. Because there's been a lot of times in my life I could not change. I couldn't change what I was doing. I couldn't change the way I thought. I couldn't change those things. 
There are things we can change and things we cannot change. And we do have to know the difference between those two. There's been things that I could change. There was things that I could repent. There's been other things that I couldn't. I needed God to, to do something on the inside of me. See, I've said before, a man can repent, but that doesn't mean his desire goes away. That's where I needed God to change my desires, change my heart. Because even though I wasn't doing the sin, I still loved the sin. You see what I'm saying? And I couldn't seem to, it didn't matter what I did, it didn't, that didn't change. That's where we become dependent and have to lean on God. This simple prayer. God, let me watch you change my heart. Let me watch you change my heart. Sometimes it happens overnight and sometimes it doesn't. But in the end, I've watched God change my heart, change my life, change my circumstances, change my situation. Because when you get to the end of yourself, you have to find the glory of God and everything that happens not only through you but to you was for His glory. When God changes you, it's not for your glory, it's for His glory. And it is this glory that changes us from glory to glory. I hope you can receive that. Don't lose heart. God wants you to walk in power. But not your power, His power. Father, I thank you today. I thank you so much for, Lord, the people in this church. I thank you, Lord, for the people in this ministry. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in their hearts and lives. God, every person in this place being in a different place. Places, Lord, of maturity. Places of growth. Places of change. Things that haven't changed. Places that need change. Lord, I consider it my honor and my privilege to be a partaker in what you are doing. I want to see your power. I want to see your glory. I want to see it in the land of the living. But I also want to see it in my heart, my home, my life. I know that everything is subject to change. But you're the Lord that changes not. And God, we're going to be conformed and changed and molded into the image of your Son. You have intended from the very beginning for us to walk in power. Let's close this out in this prayer. God, I want to see your power working in my life, working in my home, working on my job, working in the places that I go. I want to see it this week. I want to see it today. Lord, I believe that you are changing the things I cannot change. I believe that I'm going to see your power and your great glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Make that your prayer this week as you go about. Just ask God to show you. Let me see your power, Lord. Let me see your power. If you're reading the Bible, 